Hi guys, it's Kamil here, and this is my 2020 media top 7 books. I read this year 45 books so far, and I thought it might be fun to record a short video highlighting 7 of the best novels I had a pleasure to read this year. Why 7? Because this is my lucky number. Just kidding. It just felt right to include those seven novels. We Hi. While editing, I realized that my Goodreads account that I used to go through the books I read this year to compile the list you are about to watch is incomplete. And some books are missing. There's one book in particular that should have been included on this list. So it will be eight books at the end of the day. And I'll jump in again later in the video to talk about that book. We will start with two International Booker Prize titles, and since those were reviewed by me in length, I will address them with just one or two sentences, and I will provide the links to the reviews down in the box below, or somewhere here. Number seven, The Adventures of China Iran by Gabriela Cabezon Camera. Queer and very playful version of Argentinian foundational epic El Gaucho Martin Fierro. The link to the full-length review is down in the box below. Number 6. The Enlightenment of the Green Gage Tree by Shukufe Aza. This is one of very few, especially recently, brilliant and enriching the novel Applications of Magical Realism. The ghost of 12-year-old girl tells a tragic story of her family and her nation suffocating under the dictatorship of the Islamic Revolution. Loved it. We'll link my review down in the box below. Number 5. An Unnecessary Woman by Rabi Alameddin. This is probably the first book about books that I didn't find at all pompous, cringy or totally nonsensical. You know, there are so many books about books dropping author names or book titles for God only knows what reason. Actually, the second title that comes to mind and that utilized that device well was also long listed for International Booker Prize, Mike and His Problem by Villa Matas. But coming back to Unnecessary Woman, Rabbi Alameddin created a touching and sympathetic picture of loneliness and reading life in Beirut, Lebanon. The protagonist of the novel is a solitary 71-year-old woman who translates works from English and French into Arabic. Her work is set around translating foreign fiction, so something that was only translated to English or French, and then using those two translations, she creates her version in Arabic. This is also a memoir of the reading life, with very accurate, funny, and quite brilliant commentary about many great contemporary writers. While it's also a fantastic portrait of Lebanese society. Number four, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Just briefly, as everybody knows this work, what I found the most intriguing is not the dystopian world Ishiguro builds, but I believe Never Let Me Go is the most rewarding when read as a study of our primal fear of death, our longing for immortality, and how we fool ourselves with the fact that art that we create will in some extent guarantee us that immortality. Brilliant. Hi, it's me again, jumping in to say that number four, Exequo with Ishiguro is shared by Richard Wright, The Native Son. Reading this novel, I was going back and forth from thinking this is shocking and unbelievable, and here I mean burning a body in a central heating oven, to thinking it's so, so good. And the latter was the dominant thought. This is a story of Bigger Thomas, a young Afro-American living in humiliating poverty in the black area of Chicago in the 30s of the last century. Richard Wright, in his groundbreaking novel, talks about the most horrific outcomes of racism. What I was the most impressed with, aside of social 
criticism, obviously, was the fact that Wright decided to showcase the demoralizing outcomes of racism through an anti-hero and accuse USA right from the start. He demonstrates that, starting from the title of this novel, Bigger Thomas is a native son to the USA. All the crimes he committed, all he became was fueled by the damaging racist society of that era. And that was not a safe path to walk back then in the USA. It definitely took huge amount of courage to write a novel as such. But it paid off. Native Sun is probably one of the most influential novels published in the USA in the 20th century. You know, Another Country by Baldwin, one of my favorite novels, would not be as fantastic book it is if it wasn't for The Native Sun by Richard Wright. Okay, number four, Execo with Ishiguro, The Native Sun by Richard Wright. Number three, the other name, Septology by Jon Fosse. I recorded a full-length review of this one for my International Booker series, so here let me just say that Fosse in this novel seems to be meditating on how much authority we have over our lives. By showing the lives of two men with the same name, one with relatively successful life and the other one consumed by alcoholism, both oddly echoing shared path which at certain point led into totally different directions, Fosse seems to, in most humble way, ask all those big questions about our place in life. It's one of those books with immense symbolism to be discovered with each subsequent reading. I read Jennifer Croft's Jennifer is a translator that won International Booker Prize for Flights with Olga Tokarczuk. I read Jennifer Croft's post about this novel and she pointed out to the structure. This is the first book in a trilogy and it is divided into two parts. And she believes that the larger work, all those three books, will likely correspond to the book of Genesis as the first section in this novel is about light, which God created on the first day, and the second section could be about heaven, the sky to separate the waters. I will link her Instagram post about this novel down in the box below. Number two, Your Face Tomorrow, Volume 1, Fever and Spear by Javier Marias. This is Polish edition. It's very hard to categorize this novel. Javier Marias, using quite undefined espionage activity of British secretive intelligent group during the Second World War, is serving the reader a meditation on human nature, speculation of what makes people act the way they do. Set in the world of British academia, this is a deeply intellectual novel, rather focus-demanding, slow-paced, but immensely impressive work of fiction. It almost feels like Marius was creating his own genre with this novel. It really does feel that. In already mentioned Rabbi Alamedin, um, An Unnecessary Woman, there is a section talking about this novel and it refers to one of the essays where Marius suggested that his work deals as much with what didn't happen as with what happened. He refers to the fact that we forget or diminish the aspects of how much we are formed by the decisions we didn't make, by the events that could have happened but didn't, or by our lack of choice we could have made to participate in something, right? While we tend to focus only on the experiences that we went through. While the ones that we didn't go through, the lack of it shapes us just as strongly, in his opinion. And I find it really fascinating. And now, the number one. The Books of Jacob by Olga Tokarczuk, to be released in English translation in March 2021. This work in Poland is thought to be Tokarczuk Magnum Opus, the size of it. 
but it's not only the size. Set in Central and Eastern Europe, mostly on the border of nowadays Ukraine and Poland, but also crossing to Turkey, Greece and Germany, the books of Jacob are a fascinating novel centered around self-proclaimed Jewish messiah, a historical figure, Jacob Frank who after creating a sectarian version of Judaism gathered a significant following which he led to almost forced baptism. Tokarczuk tells this fascinating story with typical for her dark, a bit fantastical and witty way, but yet historically accurate. The amount of research that went into this book is impressive, if not mind-blowing. I cannot wait for the English word to read it. Because really, this is something else. This book, released in Poland in 2014, sold 170,000 copies in hardback before Tokarczuk received Nobel Prize. You know, Tokarczuk is a controversial figure in Poland, I guess as everybody in every country who is not afraid to tell the truth about darker aspects of that country's history. But she is also a best-selling author. Before Nobel Prize, she sold in total over 1 million books in Poland. After the award, she sold in two months another million copies. Okay, guys, that's it. Those were my seven favorite books that I read this year. Please share with me which were your favorite books that you read this year so far. I love some recommendations, so please let's talk down in the box below. And I talk to you soon. Have a brilliant weekend. Bye bye, guys.